Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me, Julie Erickson. I'm a learning specialist here at TIE for Tech Tuesday. This week or this month, we are learning about iBooks Author. And all the resources for today's session are available at this URL. You were also sent them um, in your login email. And so we're going to be going through a lot of those resources. I'm running off of two different computers today, so we'll see how, <laughs> how interesting it gets. So here is a, a couple of things. I, um, I hadn't used iBooks Author until this fall, and it was, it was kind of a learning curve. And I thought, my goodness, this is, you know, I, I, didn't, I, had to, I didn't really understand, and I, I wasn't really sure how it all worked. And then once I got into it, it's like, wow, this is really easy. And one of the, one of the articles that was most useful for me is this first one here, these well, why use um, five, re five reasons to try iBooks author. And that's by Monica Burns, and she's an ed tech consultant. And she goes through a number of reasons here the biggest thing she talks about, number one, is the short learning curve. And I have to say I agree with her. iBooks Author is done really well and in such a friendly manner. Oh, hi, Abby. You joined us. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, and so one of the great reasons um, is the short learning curve. And because they have such great templates and everything available that you can start out using one of their templates and create a really nice looking textbook or short book without um, needing to be an expert. The other thing um, that I really liked about it is it fits along with one of my other projects. I'm working on a textbook project here at Thai cre created from open education resources. And one of the reasons for using OER is you can customize your students' textbooks. And so by using, by creating a textbook in iBooks Author, you are using, um, you can use the content that you have, that you've created, and then customize it for your students which falls along under number three, creating collections of student work. I found some great examples of um, student work that you guys can use for inspiration as you go on and create textbooks. The um, fourth reason here, kids can contribute. I love this one because it too fits with um, both student contribution and um, the OER textbooks because one of the reasons you can use um, that's really cool about OER textbooks is that kids can suggest, oh, you're missing this, or what would happen if we added this content? And so you can go in and they can actually contribute to the content. And finally, as Monica points out, it's just cool. And there are so many cool things that you can create to make these textbooks interactive that it's just a lot of fun. So this is Monica's reasons to use um, iBooks Author. Then the other t uh, article I found extremely useful is this guide by James Gibbons, and he is a um, geography and humanities teacher, and he has a lot of nice examples. He kind of goes through and does the, you know, how to get started, but then he talks about the interactive elements, and that's the big um, um, cool thing that, you know, the big change from our standard textbook where we flip through and, yeah, there's a nice picture and, oh, look, there's a link we could type in to having actual galleries. You can have a number of images that you can flip through. Uh, they have these really great um, ability to embed videos. You can also embed your YouTube if you want to. Review. We can embed little quizzes in our textbook as we're going along. And so they, they don't come to the teacher, so it would just be, you know, student reflection. But you can go through and check your understanding. You can embed uh, keynote presentations. And so if you've created a presentation, you can embed that in. And then you also have the ability to embed interactives. And so this interactive example here, if I were to click on any one of those um, words, it would bring it up larger. You can go out there and get 3D files. You can do popovers. 
And finally, you can publish your content into iBooks Author, uh, from iBooks Author into the, um, uh, you can publish it out into iTunes U, or you can just publish it out and save it. And so if you wanted to put it in your Dropbox or put it on your website, you could do that so that students could download it. His five tips were the tips that really resonated with me. And as I was figuring it out without his article, were the ones that <laughs> I figured out. So I was like, awesome, James and I think alike. First of all, start with a great template. Using their pre-installed templates is an easy way to do that. Gather your resources beforehand. That is the key to having your iBook creation go through really smoothly. If you gather your text, if you gather your images, if you gather your videos, your audio, all of that ahead of time, it's going to be so much easier than um, trying to look at an empty screen and try to figure out what you want to put there. That being said, as I've been playing with some content, I keep thinking, oh, this would be a great addition. And I go out and I find a map, or I go out and I find a video. And so you can add some creativity, but if you kind of have some of that plan in place, it goes together a lot quicker. Keep your design structured. And that's, you know, if you look at any standard textbook, you'll see that too. Consistent structure really helps the students, really helps the learning and the navigation of the book. And so if you can go through and, you know, keep your design structured, but that goes along with using that template. And then he talks about including content that's interactive. And that's been the really creative part for me as I've been looking at this um, you know, going through and looking at iBooks Author is what can I do with this image? How could I make it more interactive? Or what could I put here to help make this mean, um, be more um, interesting to the students? And then finally, he talks about ways that you can show off your book. And um, so he wants you to make sure you have a good cover. And, it, and he, it, that's if you use the iBook store, you definitely want to have a, a nice cover on your book. So a couple of other resources when we go back then to the links. I'm not going to spend much time going through the tutorials, but I found uh, I generally have questions. I'll get in the middle of creating something and then I think, oh, hmm. So I went out there and I found some tutorials that I've used. The first one there is an actual lengthy PDF ebook. It's from O'Reilly Media. And if you're familiar with those publishers, they do a really nice job with the tech, tech um, um, how-to books. The iBooks author tutorial from Grapevine um, Colleyville Independent School District, that one is a shorter uh, few pages and so if you just need a quick start that's a nice one. If you want a hand by uh, hand holding step-by-step everything but the kitchen sink, the iTunes, iBooks, Author Starter Kit is awesome. Because not only does it give you the tutorial, it also gives you the files. And so you can build a book while following along with their tutorial. And then finally, the Mac support. Sometimes you're in the middle of something and you're like, how does this work? I found that the iBooks Author Apple support has, pet, has gotten me through many of those situations. So that's been really useful. If you prefer videos, there's a couple of videos that I've watched that have been very good. The 30 minute video, the basics plus widgets is excellent because he goes through all of the steps to creating a book in 30 minutes. Not too fast, not too slow, and he's not annoying to listen to. So he's a good one. And then the hour video is also a good one to go through and, and see how to, to use that. Now we get into the samples, and that's the best part, because when you think about books and you think about, oh, yeah, you open the book and you flip through the pages, iBooks are not like that. You open the book and there's a video, and you open the book and there's an interactive image, and so it's really fun if you can go out there and find some, you know, examples and get some inspiration. The One Best Thing series is probably my favorite examples. These are created by Apple Distinguished Educators, and I've used a number of them um, to go through and just come up with ideas of what I could use in my textbooks. 
The iTunes U course, uh, Inspiring Ideas for Teachers, also has some great examples. The iBooks Author Gallery from Apple has excellent examples of their widgets and the interactive components. And then because I really wanted to show some examples of students creating iBooks, there are um, a couple of links at the bottom there, those class eBooks from Mr. Smith. And this is amazing. He goes through and has his different classes create ebooks and if we ever can get it to load it's got a lot of pictures on it but he um goes through and does a really fabulous job of showing off um the different ebooks that the students have created and so i've really i thought that was a, a, a definitely a, a useful example to show share with you guys because they have everything in here from kindergarten to high school. Well, it was there beforehand. Oh well. Oh, here it is. Excellent. So here's his his recently published books, and they're collaborating. They tried to write, compile, and publish a book in 40 minutes. Computers and cronuts. Here we have the modern Canterbury Tales. And while he says click on the image to buy in iTunes, they are free in iTunes, and so you don't have to um, you don't have to pay for them. But as you go through, um, you see that there are different um, different classes, different grades, and when you go in and if you were to download them um, through iTunes, you'd be able to see. Um, the different different tools they use and how they what they've done with the what they've done with iBooks. So I love this because it's so many different examples. And then this last one, um, the students authoring of content using iBook Author. It's a really great sample class project. Um, and he talks about what they did, what he had the students do, and how they um, how they did how they managed that project. And then finally, iBooks author does not do it all, unfortunately. And there's a couple of things that when you're inputting widgets, as we'll get here into here in a couple minutes, you can input videos, you can input audio, but you can't embed a YouTube video like you do on a web page or in many other resources. To input anything um, like that, you have to use HTML5. To get that coding, you can use Bookery. And it's super easy to go onto this website. You do need to create an account. And then you can embed your URL or your embedded code and it'll let you go. So if you wanna do YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, um, Flickr, any of those um, online sites that, that, you know, have the embed opportunity, most of them are available in Bookery. So it's a quick way to get your HTML5 code and use that. And then audio. I was working with a Spanish teacher and she wanted to include some audio into her book. And so one of the ways that we said she could record herself was using QuickTime and that's generally on your, on your computer. So that's the the introduction let's jump over to iBooks author so here's iBooks author uh, we haven't started anything yet because we'll start from scratch I do have a folder full of content that I've gathered ahead of time in preparation for today's session and I'm going to pick a template and I'm using contemporary so this is why it's overwhelming when you don't know what you're going to put in the book. <laughs> it's like seeing a blank PowerPoint. What's nice about using iBooks Author is many of their resources will pre-fill. Obviously the book title will want to change our title to the title that we're going to, to call it. And I'm doing this, we're learning about Middle America today because we were really interested in that. And so if I go up to my book title, I can change that to Middle America. And notice it changed over here on the sidebar. Our intro media, 
when we look at a lot of the samples, we see that there's often a video in there. The table of contents will pre-fill. And so as we add our content, it'll pre-fill in. Now I want to show you a sample of an iBook that's already been created just so that you can see how that, how that works. Over in my iBooks, I have downloaded a couple of the one best things. And this is my favorite one best thing. And I think I've read it, oh, I don't know, 50 times. And he says, don't create a book, create a field trip, building interactive multi-touch books. And this is Sean, and he is one of the um, Apple Distinguished Educators. They talk a little bit about the one best thing, and then the video. You can delete that if you want, or um, you could put a picture there too when you're creating your own, type, own book. These one best things almost always follow the same format, and so he gives you a little bit of inf information about iBooks author, and now he gives us our sample lesson. And he's created an interactive field trip without having to go anywhere. So here we have our legend. And notice if we click on the landmarks, we'll have a short video. And if we click on the red dots, we'll get a guiding question. And I'll actually show you guys how to do some of this before we're all done. So if I click on a red dot, notice, we get our guiding question. How many stories tall is the Empire State Building? If we click on the Empire State Building, he links us out to a video. So each one of these landmarks has a question and a video. And then he's also thrown in a review quiz here. And there are eight questions. So the Statue of Liberty was a gift from which country? And I answered that one earlier. Terrorist attack took place at which landmark on September 11th, 2001? I can check my answer. If I get my answer wrong, I can try again. And we're going to say we're done because we're not going to go through all eight questions. So, and then this is why this is my favorite book, is because on his last page, he's gone through and he gives us how to create panoramic pages, which is what this um, New York picture is. It's a panoramic page. How to hide the interactive content, which is what he's done here with, with all the little, um, the video and the, the interactives there. And then how to create your own pages with Keynote. And so he actually goes through and gives you a step-by-step -step guide to doing all the stuff that he's modeled in this textbook. When we're in this textbook, um, and this is in iBooks, if you're at the top of the page, you can see the table of contents. And this is what will automatically generate as we go through and create our textbook. So that's a sample textbook for you with, with some of the interactives. So now we'll pop back to our textbook and see what we can create. So I told you I'd gathered all my content ahead of time. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert some content. And what's great is you can take content that's already in a Word document and if for every page break, it'll create either a new chapter or a new section. So I'm going up to insert and I'm going to say pages. And I'm going to say insert chapters from um, a pages or a Word document. And then I am going to grab this um, chapter five, Middle America. And from here, I want to go down and I'm not doing chapters, I'm actually going to do sections. And so I'm gonna select this section here and I'm gonna say choose, and this is where the magic happens. It 
created my textbook, this whole chapter, and this is a pretty long do document, but as you can see, it's, it's created the whole chapter here. Now if we go up to the table of contents, it will have pre-filled in my chapter five, because that's what I called it in my, in my title, it's called chapter five, and I could change all that if I wanted to. Um, and it's pre-filled all that. Now note my section one here does not match the rest of my chapter. That was just the content that, that came in. And so I am actually going to delete that section. And there we are. So now we are working with our chapter. However, since we're doing Middle America, we should probably think about our, our, what our title looks like, what our cover looks like. And so this probably isn't the best cover. We can actually go out. Remember, I gathered some pictures and images ahead of time. And so I can actually go out and I can drag in an image and just drop it in the perfect world. Well, maybe I can't. Here we go. There we go. And I've put an image in. So that's my chapter image. And I could also use the same image at the top of the cover if I wanted to, because we are talking about, you know, keeping our consistency. So I could put that in at the top. And it'll automatically fill in and, and crop nicely. And I could rearrange that if I wanted to. So here we are. This is um, more of, and this chat, this section here is really more of an introduction. And so I can actually change that section layout if I wanted to and call it like the forward if I wanted to. And so now it changes the formatting and it looks it's a little bit more of an introduction to this chapter. So now we are here. And I'll make that look nice here too. Now we are here in our chapter. Notice that we have the sidebar here and that's part of the formatting that comes along with the chapter. And so I'm going to take the learning objectives that came with my chapter and I'm just going to copy and paste them over. And so now, I can delete this whole section here. And I've got my learning objectives that I could set up in every chapter or in every section that I, if I wanted to. Scrolling through, I have my pages. And so one of the other nice things about this resource is you can build a glossary as you go. So for example, say we wanted to define a land bridge, because what is a land bridge? So I can highlight that word and then once I've highlighted it, Oops. Notice that it fills up um, up here towards the top of the page where it says new glossary term. And there I can say add term. And that first time I've done that, it'll be dark. The rest of the time, it won't be. It'll just be highlighted. And so let me see if I can find another one that will probably be repeated in this section. So we'll do continents and I'll add that term also. And then using control F, I'm going to look and see just for, okay, so it's only, it's only in the, there twice. Okay, that's not a good example word. But if, I, if the word were to repeat again, I would be able to link to it very easily. And so I don't have to, um, I can, I don't, I only have to create the, the 
definition once. And so once I click on that, it jumps me to the glossary and I can write in my land, um, my definition for land bridge. Um, I could also write in my definition for continents. And so whenever I were to double click on that um, in the text, we would be able to either go to the con go to the glossary or else I would be able to um, mouse over it and it would show me show me the definition of that word. So that's the glossary. So it's very easy to create a glossary in here and to link multiple terms. So as we scroll through our chapter, there's a number of things we could do to make it interactive, but we're going to um, go to the end of the chapter where we've got the questions and the key takeaways, and we'll use some of those as the as what we use um, to to add some of the widgets for interactivity. One of the widgets for interactivity is a scrolling sidebar, and so that allows us to create a sidebar that we can scroll through. And so we don't have to, um, you don't have to, ha it doesn't, you could have a smaller area and then they can scroll through to read the whole thing. So I'm gonna take the key takeaways here and I'm gonna put that in the scrolling sidebar. And so notice now that there's a scrolling sidebar here and so they could scroll through that. And we can place that at the end of this chapter. So now we have a scrolling sidebar on takeaways there. Another widget that I've really liked is the, um, well, taking a, taking a page out of the, the one best thing example, we're going to add a page to our textbook here. So I'm gonna go over and I am going to insert a page. And so now we have a blank page. I'm gonna go to my file of documents and I am going to grab an outline map and we'll use this for our review purposes. So I do need to make this larger so that I can see it, um, so it fills the page. And so I will make my, make my image larger so it fills up my page. And then we will embed some of the features. Uh, one of the things that um, in the example, when he embedded everything, he also goes through and he locks this image here so that as we add content on top of it, this image does not get in the way. So now we get to do some of the fun things, including make it a little bit bigger. So this is where we can embed a gallery, for example. If we wanted to have a scroll through um, group of images, we could embed a gallery. Um, I'm gonna skip that one, and I'm gonna do the review, actually. So notice, if you click review, you come up with the default, and it is the question answer. But over on the far, left-hand side of the page, if I hit the um, arrow there, I get, we have other question options. So we have multiple choice, multiple choice with an image, uh, multiple choice with an image, um, multiple, multiple images to pick from, drag to label target, or drag a thumbnail to target. And so say you wanted the kids to label a map. We could add that. We can pull in another image of a map. And now we can change our labels here.
So let's see. I should make you guys help me. It's awfully small. So you can change the labels on here. We can add more labels if we wanted to by changing the number over here on the left hand side. We could add as up to six different um, label options if we wanted to. And so I'm going to go back to question one and we'll give that a demo question here and we'll say So you can answer questions here. And because I'm only going to have three options, I will make change that to three. All right. And so remember how in that really cool example book, he had things hidden, and so it didn't hide the big image that we were on. The students had to click on it. We can do that. We can move this off over into the water. And then, we can take our layout here. We can hide the title. And then we can also, change it so that let's see and some days I have a hard time with this hypothetically you can change the opacity here to zero and I'm not sure why I can't do that right now probably because I'm modeling it on the internet Okay, there we go. Oh, that's still not working. But anyways, oh, there we go. See, I just didn't click hard enough. So now I've changed it, so I've made it disappear. And so with that in mind, I'm going to want to throw something over it so that the students know to click on that. So I'll drop here and I'll say review. So now they'll know to click in this area and it'll pull up their their little box here. Um, we can also embed some other fun widgets in here, including um, we want to do I wanted to show you the interactive image because this one we have the ability to drag in the picture if we wanted and we talked a little bit about um, in that one example um, of how she created she went in and created um, labels and so as a student students slid over um, the country or the the information it gives them more information there and so here I can add in more details and so I could add in country information here if I wanted to or I could add in an interesting fact um, and go that route and then I can change how it zooms in too. And so if I wanted it to zoom in more, I could change that. So right now it's zoomed in pretty closely to Nicaragua here. Um, and I can rearrange the picture on, on how I want to do that. So if I click out, I can change this one. And then I can also zoom in on that. And so I have options there. So as we go in and look at this, we'll be able to see how that works. So those are a couple of the interactives. I also wanted to show you what happens when we wanted to embed a, for example, a Google Map. 
To embed the Google Map, you have to use the HTML5 coding. To use the HTML5 coding, you do need to um, use Bookery to get to that. So let's jump over to Safari. We'll go over to Bookery. And I did create one earlier today, so we'll use that one as our example. So what I did is I went out and I selected the Google Map. You have to name it, so I named it Google Maps because I'm that creative. And then I named it, um, the widget title is the Isthmus of Panama. And then it asked for the Google Maps link. And that's where I thought I was going to lose my mind. So when you're in Google Maps, and we've found the map that we want, and we really want to embed this, to get to the information you need, you need to go in and get the embed code. You can't just use the URL at the top of the in the window to, to make it to make it work. And so you have to click on share. And then there's embed map. And that's what you want to copy and paste is the embed code into your bookery um, resource. So once you've copied and pasted that in, then you can either save it and preview it, you can save it, or you can download it. I downloaded it. I'll download it again because I don't remember where I downloaded it to. All right. And on my computer, it tells me it can't be opened because it's from an unidentified developer. And that's okay because you don't want to open it. We just want to put it into our, our iBooks. So that's not a big deal. So now I'm going to go back to iBooks. And we will add another page here. So I want to add it down here. And we will insert the HTML. So now what it does is it brings in a handy dandy box. I go over and because I downloaded it from the internet, it went into my downloads folder. And I just drag it in and I drop it there. And there it sits. And so now, if I really want to see what it looks like, I have to preview my book. So let's go ahead and take a minute and we'll preview and we'll look at all the cool things that we've added in in terms of widgets. So when you're in your um, iBooks, you can preview them by clicking on preview. And it'll open it up in iBooks, in, in iBooks. And you can actually test all the functionality. And so here's our interactive map. And if I want to pop it out, I can make it larger. And if I'm done, I'm done. And so if I wanted to zoom into that, I could have zoomed into that. So here's the interactives that we are playing with over in um, on the other page. Here's our questions, what body of water. Here's our drag and drops. And then when I'm done, it says I got two out of two answers correct. Congratulations. And then if I click on these, it'll move over. And it's like this one's a small enough image that I would want to blow it up a little bit to, to see there. 
But so those, those are some of the options. The other things that are really nice here, here's our scrolling sidebar. So we've got that um, that we, we put in there. And as I look at this, I think, oh, these other images, you know, wouldn't it be fun to go out there and find some other images of, of pyramids or other content and create a gallery here instead of just having one picture? Or maybe I want to embed a video. So when I'm in this book, I can go up and I can look at my thumbnails. And so I can see at the bottom of the page here all of my content. Notice that I have my glossary here. And I wanted to show you guys what that looks like in the actual book. And so we'll scroll back through. And we highlighted Land Bridge. And so when I click on that, it shows me the definition. I could go to the glossary or I could jump out to a dictionary. And then continents is the same way. So that's how the glossary works. So it's a great way to um, add, an e easy way to add a glossary to your um, interactive glossary to your textbook. So that's looking at the sample. So that's all the work that we've done so far in, in a sample format. So now say this book is the best thing we've ever created and we want to publish it. Publishing will put it into the iBook store and when you put it in the iBook store, you do have to go through um, some hoops and they, they do some verifying. You can put content in the iBook store that you don't charge for, so that's awesome. Um, and that one school sample that I gave you, they don't charge for their textbooks or their, their books that are created by students. However, if you don't want to put your book in the iBook store, you can just go up to File. And you can click on pub, um, export. And then you have the iBooks option. And if you say next to this, it'll just save it as iBooks. And then you can go in to it'll go into um, onto your desktop or wherever you've saved it to. And then you can actually go into iBooks and open that file and it'll open up into your iBooks account. And so you have options. You do not have to um, put it into the um, I, iBook store. You can just save it to your desktop. You can save it to your website, um, wherever you'd want to save the content. So that is basically enough to make you dangerous in iBooks Author. Do you guys have any questions about iBooks Author or anything that we've talked about? Well, answering your questions, um, so Joan asked about the text, and actually the content, that's a really good question. The content is OER content that is, I, I borrowed it from a source. Um, it's, it's a sailor textbook, a geography textbook, because that's what we've been working on for the textbook project. The, um, and like images, I do want to quick show you. When I looked for the images to use in my project today, I made sure that the images could be reused and that they were, um, Creative Commons licensed. And by to do that, basically all I did was I did a search for just a Google search. And then for images, so I'm in Google, I did a Google search, and at the top of the page you have the, the images option there. I clicked on that. And then notice that we see other options here. We see search tools. I clicked on that and then I clicked on usage rights. And I wanted something that was labeled for reuse. And so that eliminated a lot of the pictures. But any one of these now, when I click on them, they should be able to be reused. However, you are going to want to make sure that the licensing is fits with your licensing. And that's a whole other webinar. Um, so if we go in and look at this one, 
and this is from Wikimedia Commons. And this is a great resource because it tells you um, when you download, if you click on download, it comes up and it tells you the attribution. And so like this one here, you can copy and paste this. And if I was um, really creating a textbook, I actually have a folder of all or a file of all of my attributions. And so if I was going to take this textbook to the next level, I would um, put in my attributions for all of my images. And so here we have it's public domain, and so I can copy and paste that into my um, attribution folder, and then I can also download the image if I want to. But so that's how I found the images um, and made sure that I could use them legally. And so Liz, you ask, how would you put it in iTunes U as a PDF? I don't know that I can answer that question. Um, because I don't have, um, I have not done a lot with iTunes U. You can save it as a PDF. Just do the, the file and then export. And then you can do PDF. Once you've done the PDF, you lose the um, interactivity of it. So you don't have any of the, like if you've, if you've put in image gallery, if you put in any of those, you, you lose any of that interactivity. Um, and then if you, Liz, do you know if you can, um, you can upload it to, to iBook into, you, if you can upload content into iTunes, you, you could upload it as an iBook. You just can't, um, if you wanted to publish it out there, um, as an iBook, you would need to go through the hoops to get it published. But you should be able to link the content like you would regularly link content. But I'll do some follow-up and I'll send an email to you guys to make sure that, that we're all clear on all the cool things you can do with it. So you guys have any other questions about iBook's author and all the neat things you can do? All right, well, I am going to wrap up then. I do have one more. Yes, Liz, the, the folder with the organ is the organization. Yes, that is, that makes it so much easier because I, it is just so overwhelming. <laughs> What's the best reason to use this? Oh, I can think of a ton of reasons to use this. Can you guys think of some reasons to use this? <laughs> Um, one best reason, um, go ahead and everybody type in your one best reason to use this. And I can wait. Awesome. Yes. Kids making a book about themselves. That's a really great idea. And that's one of the, one of the, um, examples in on on that page that of all the kid examples the customized is another great reasons and personal um when I was out there looking for samples, I found, and, it, and I didn't give it to you guys because the site was too commercialized. It just had too many, too many links out to ads, but um, it had a lot of other reasons to use iBooks Author for everything from creating um, brochures or interactive brochures to using it as a way to put together your um, photo albums, a way to, to personalize your photo albums. So I just think it's, it's got a lot of really, oh, Liz, <laughs> you've got a cookbook in the iBook store. Well, now you know what you're doing. <laughs> It'll be all interactive. You'll have videos in there. <laughs> oh, neat. We'll have to go out and look for Bennett favorites. What fun. All right. Well, thank you, guys. You've been a great crew today. I've really enjoyed getting to work with you. Um, so our next Tech Tuesday is coming up on January 5th. It's me again. Um, and in January, we're doing Digo. 
And so lots of different ways to research, share, and collaborate with Deagle. So I'm excited to, to present that. So thank you guys again for coming and hanging out. I appreciated it and see you in January.